Okay, you're rolling, okay. Well, I'm here with Jim Moray, uh, a man who seems to be popping up all over this festival this year, um, doing your trademark Silent Kaylee. Um, were you booked on that to start with and then ended up doing the gigs? Or <laughs> No, um, no, we were booked for the band. Uh, first, it, we were actually booked five minutes after we came off stage last year. Oh. Um, yeah, as we came off stage, Alan shook my hand and said, Saturday night next year. So that was, it was very good of him to, yeah. to, to, yeah. to not go back on that. Um, so yeah, no, but the Silent, Silent Kaylee was only booked about three weeks ago. They decided to do it. So yeah, it's but it's, it's great. I really enjoy doing them, and they're, they're fairly easy to do because there's a lot of prep work to go in. But once you've got it, you know, right, yeah. it's yeah. it's the one chance to actually enjoy what I'm doing. Really, <laughs> I mean, yeah. You can chill out while you're yeah, there. Yeah, you can chill out yeah. while you're doing yeah. it. That's right. I mean, the band set is fantastic. I mean, the thing that always strikes me about you that you you never rest on your laurels, really, do you? You always pick something different out of the hat no, or it's, push yourself. Or it's, a, it's a curse, you know. <laughs> um, no, I, I don't know. I, I'm not the one to comment on, on on that. I kind of do the things that I do. You know, yeah. you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. But well, yeah, but that's that's the thing. You do, you know. You, for a long time you've been called the bright young hope of folk and all that kind of stuff and people seem to forget that you've been in the industry for quite a while now you know um, but you do manage to just pull something different out of the hat each time I mean how you know you, and you're always well, quite critical on yourself I know you know you're, you're your own worst critic so how, how do you approach doing a festival set like this one so well, it depends it depends on the festival set I mean I the, 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 the brief for yesterday was to pull all the stops out and try and put on a show as if we were headlining. I mean, whether we did that or not is, a, <laughs> is another matter. Um, we had a few problems, but, um, but no, I mean, I think, I think, you know, to a big audience, they want to see big music. And, and, and you know, there's no reason why, folk, why, why traditional music can't be big music. Uh, and I think, you know, Bella had an Imagine Village and... And, and to, the music I've been making on record kind of proved that really. Yeah. I think I, I, there's, there's, you know, I don't think there's a, ten years ago when I started playing. I don't. I think the idea of English folk music filling filling a big hall was just, you know, ca- true. Actually, the, the, yeah. the highest yeah. you could get up the bill at Cambridge was three in the afternoon because, you know, English music can't play to a big crowd. And, and I think that's completely turned around in ten years. So that's definitely, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's yeah. good. It had to be intimate music, didn't it? Whereas now it's yeah. it's bigger and expansive. And it's yeah, but um, but no, I mean that's how, that's how you approach a big festival set. Though actually, recently I've I've been doing a lot of solo playing this year, and I've done a couple of fairly big stages this summer, just me and a guitar. And actually, I've really enjoyed doing that. I can see how you know Billy Bragg or or whoever. I can see why they do what they do. I can I I, I kind of get it now. Well, the, the set you just did on the stage two was very much like that, wasn't it? You started off with, with a guitar and then, you know, it, it developed. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, that, that was a bit of, a, bit of an experiment. I was trying, to, trying out some new material on the, on the audience here. Um, there's very few festivals I would do that yeah. at, though. Yeah. At Shrewsbury, it's one of them, probably. Yeah. So, yeah. And that worked. Yeah, I, th- I think I think there's a, there's there's a lot of work to be done on the songs, but we'll we'll get there. It's it's all. I mean, going back to resting on your laurels, I, I don't know any other way. I mean, I I don't, I I can't, I can't comprehend how you could not. You know, I I, I can't. I, I it, it it just doesn't appeal. I, I get bored too quickly. So I, I don't. You know, I, I mention your names. I don't understand how you could play, how make the same record over and over again. I just don't get it. And there's lots of people in folk music who do, and I, I don't, I don't understand. So, but you are an artist that seems as soon as you've got one album out, you've got half the material for the next album. Is, yeah. it, is it really like that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it takes a long time to get material, and also the material find, finds you. I, I never have an album's worth of material. I've got an album to, that I can make up from what's floating around. Right. Do you know what I mean? And there's always more stuff that's floating around that's not going to fit in a set. Because you, you just have to kind of see how things fit together in a group. Um, yeah, I, uh, yeah. And, you know, creatively, I've, I've always thought that you're, you're trying to find that set of songs that you are not necessarily comfortable with, but the fit for that album at that yeah. point in time. And I think Skulk, your most recent album, is, I think it's your best album. I, I think it's my best album. I, I, it's the one I'm, I mean, usually by this point, I, I'm really sick of right. the record. I mean, it's been out, oh, nine months, 
eight months. So, but usually by this point, I'm completely sick of it. And 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 Skulk, I, you know, I still I still think is the best thing I've I've done. So I I don't know if that's a turning point, or whether it means that, you know, there's some I've got to go somewhere else now. You know, I've, having having taken five albums to to get to this point, <laughs> I've I've finally made the one I'm happy with, and now it's time to move on to something else. Yeah, I, I mean, don't know. We'll I, see. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't say that it the albums it negates the other albums in any way, but it's it's the one that fits best it's, of the. It's man, the most coherent. It's the most coherent, and it's probably the most well-rounded piece of work. But you know, it's taken a lot lot of work to get to that point. So I'm you know. I'm really proud of it, and yeah, I don't know. I, 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 it's it's hard to it's hard to say because I think obviously to everybody else, albums represent the period of time when they they hear it. So yeah, for a lot of people, it's still a new thing. Yeah. But to me, that's you know that's a year and a half ago's mm. songs. Um, so there's not, there's always more stuff happening, and and you're always a good 18 months ahead of everybody else as, as, a, as an artist, you know. It's, yeah, you have creative. It's weird because it. the stuff you're writing isn't going to make it to the public's ears no. for a year and a bit. No. Do yeah. you find that always in the back of your mind that there's that? Yeah, because yeah, because you're always you're always going out to promote something that's behind where you're you're at as a person, um, and 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 then trying to make that come to life every night can get a bit tricky if you're just not feeling it anymore. I mean, certainly what, that was what happened with within modern history. It's kind of it, that's how I felt at the time, and then it was over, and I didn't feel like that anymore. And and trying to play those songs therefore was kind of tricky you yeah, know because so you can't that do well, you I, I, line, yeah, yeah you can't yeah. you can't kind of you can't go through the motions have you uh, you know you may not want to answer this but have you become more comfortable in your own skin since that time do you find that you know it's not since there? that time definitely since sweet england right i mean over a 10 year period rather than a three year period yeah um but yeah i mean i yeah, <laughs> anybody anybody that's been following me for for ten years, I think has probably got a flavour of of how difficult it is for me to make music and how difficult things that other artists find very easy, I've always found very very hard. And but you know that's what makes me me, and I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't yeah, change it. Right. However, there is a lot of there is a lot of toil and mental effort that goes into. To, 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 re to making things into records and playing gigs for me, so I, yeah, I don't know. I, I it's what I have to cope with. So. Yeah, but I, th I, you know, that's that's that is what makes each of your albums an episode almost. And I think that's, yeah, well, that's they, something they are that they are is. definitely a snapshot of where my head is at at any particular time. You know, it's it's got to be a reflection of where you are creatively at that point, um, and it's got to be you know. How can it not be intensely personal? Yeah, well, I, 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 I mean, I, I don't think intensely personal is necessarily the, the, the way around it, but it's certainly, it's certainly the way you relate to music and relate to other people, I suppose, at any given point. But, uh, I mean, I suppose, I, going, going back to the Rescue on Your Laurels thing, again, I, I don't, you know, I, I don't understand how you can... I don't understand how you could make the same record over and over again. Because certainly I don't feel the same as I did five years ago, let alone ten years ago. So, you know, people who are in their 40s or whatever making... You know, how, how can you feel the same as you did when you were 18? I, I just isn't... Um, and if you don't feel the same, then why does your music sound the same? It's, 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 it's strange, it's weird. But I, I guess the people I've always been really big fans of are the, the people... Of the people, yeah, start that again. The people I've always been really big fans of are the ones who always sound, or they always sing songs that suit them at that moment. You know, Martin Carthy at the age of 70 sings songs that suit a 70 year old man. Yeah. And when he was 30, he made songs that suited a 30 year old man. You know, you know, he's never reliving past stories and, and it's always changing, even if it's the same material. The perspective and the, the way he does it is, is always is always changing, you know, and, and seeing Nick Jones this summer has kind of sparked that off for me, you know, after that gap, he doesn't sing the songs he did the same way he did when he was 30, he sings them in the, yeah. the body of a mid, man in his mid-60s, and it, yeah. it kind of, that's, you know, that's the way it should be, Yeah. and that's what I'd aspire to, really, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't want to be somebody that's pegged in a, a time, I want to 
yeah. you know, I want to keep making records for a long time. Um, and I want and to also, be different. Yeah, it's also being able to perform that material in a different way over time as well, isn't it? You know, cause you well, it's just, it's just being able to make it come to life. You know, rather than going through the motions, you want, you want it to, to bring it to life from fresh every time. And that's, I don't know, that's a hard thing to do. And it's, it's a hard thing to learn to do. So. Well, I th and I think as a listener, you know, you want, you want something that is open and honest and a re reflection of what's going on now. So it's, it's a natural thing to do if you think about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it is. I, I, don't, I don't see how it could be any, any other way. So. Well, you're doing it right, so I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't change it. <laughs> it might be hard well, work. No, th thank, thank you very yeah. much. Thank and I think, much. you know, it, it's nice, what is good as well at a festival like this, Shrewsbury, is to see you on the main stage, a smaller stage, and all the things you can bring well, to it. Well, to be honest, there, there aren't that many festivals that would let us bring a band on the main stage anymore. You know, I think... I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful to Neil Pearson and, and Alan and Sandra Surtees at Shrewsbury for the support they've given me and the, and the kind of, they give me the benefit of the doubt when nobody else would, um, se you know, several times year after year. And, you know, I, you don't get those opportunities all the time. S sadly, as, as money gets tighter and, you know, and, and bills get more conservative, people like me don't get the, those right, chances. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm really grateful to festivals like Shrewsbury for, for taking chances on artists because th there is otherwise there's no there's no intermediate stage in a career you can't yeah, you know yeah. aside from you know music industry act of god mm -hmm. like you know a mercury music prize nomination or yeah, yeah. you know I, there, there, there's, there's no way to, to to rise up the ladder unless people are given chances on yeah. On, on all varieties of stages and work their way up a bill. Yeah, and some a festival like this is fantastic. We've just seen that's, that, that size of audience being exposed to it. So yeah, well, you know, I, it's like I said earlier, the, the idea that English music could play to four thousand people. You know, you could have four thousand people watching a English artist headlining a folk festival. Yeah. It just was nonsense ten years ago. So it's a good yeah. place to be. <laughs> it, is, it is a good place to be, and it's it's a golden age, and everybody should be be happy that they're yeah. living now. Yeah. And not in 1972. <laughs> it's, it's, it's happening now. Yeah. You know? Well, thanks for talking, Jim. Always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you very we'll much. See you again. Yeah.